BBC, beautiful, fascinating and frightening. In fact, when I was younger, I had some nightmares where I was floating in very deep, dark water, just about aware that there were large creatures I couldn't quite see swimming in the murk around me. I loved old legends of sea monsters like the Kraken and old tales of the sea like Moby Dick. And eventually I became a scuba diver. So when I was writing Deep Light, I was partly drawing on my own experiences of being underwater. There's an aspect of Deep Light that wouldn't have come into being at all if it hadn't been from an email from one of my young readers. I was busy planning out the world of Deep Light when I got an email from a 13-year-old deaf girl called Ella, who told me that there weren't many deaf characters in books written for her age group, and she was asking me whether I'd ever consider putting a deaf character in one of my books. And this set off a bit of an avalanche in my head. I realised that there were, there were good reasons why one of the most important characters, Selfin, might be deaf. She'd had a diving accident of the sort that might have damaged her eardrum. And then I realised that there were good reasons why a lot of people in this diving culture might have partial or total hearing loss. And that's how the sea kissed became a part of the setting. I wrote this book in a number of different places around the house, but this, where I'm sitting now, is actually my study. I know it probably doesn't look like it. Believe it or not, this thing behind me is actually a bookcase. I got really bored of always having a bookcase behind me on video meetings and, and conversations during the pandemic. So one weekend in lockdown, when I was really bored, I made this out of cardboard and paint and foil and things like that. Um, I wanted it to look like a submarine, a silly steampunk sort of a submarine. And if you look behind me just here, you can see the deep light map. Quan, amb, quan un company de feina em va explicar uh, què eren els telòmers i que els científics de tot el món estaven investigant com frenar el desgast dels telòmers perquè està vinculat, per exemple, a diferents, uh, a diferents tipus de malalties, com per exemple el càncer, uh, doncs uh, de seguida que vaig saber què era això se'm va encendre la, la llumeta de i què passa si ho aconsegueixen, si poden aturar realment el desgast i per tant deixem d'envellir. A partir d'aquí, pa, 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 pam, el cervell de guionista es va posar a treballar i i, i m'hi vaig posar a seguida. N'explicaré dues. La primera és que eh, quan, se, quan, quan va començar aquesta cadena eh, creativa al, al meu cap, doncs, vaig necessitar per primera vegada a la meva vida doncs, crear un mapa conceptual per poder veure el, el caos que s'estava articulant al meu cervell perquè eh, la novel·la es va, es va anar fent gran és una novel·la coral, hi ha, hi ha moltíssims temes i es barregen. De manera que vaig crear un, 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 un mapa conceptual com les pissarres aquestes dels científics que van apuntant fórmules, doncs això, <ríe> paraules, personatges, trames, idees, tot connectat amb fletxes, d'una manera absolutament eh, estranyíssima que només eh, podia entendre-la jo, la veritat. Eh, la segona anècdota és que... Mm, el primer que vaig escriure d'aquest llibre va ser un tractament literari, com una mena de guió llarg eh, d'unes 90 pàgines, que va ser la base de la novel·la, i que el vaig escriure en tres setmanes. I quan el vaig tenir escrit, se'l vaig enviar a un director de cinema molt conegut eh, espanyol i, i quan s'ho va mirar, em va dir «Hòstia, eh, hauries de buscar-te un, un, un representant a Los Angeles per vendre aquesta història directament a Hollywood, perquè és molt és molt espectacular, és molt de pel·lícula. Eh, no ho vaig fer perquè no sabia ni per on començar, no, 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 no conec ningú a Los Angeles. Per tant, si vosaltres eh, us agrada molt, 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 molt i li veieu possibilitats, confio en vosaltres, que teniu contacte, sou joves i teniu en penta. La resposta fàcil seria Clive, perquè és el, el més idealista, el que segueix, el, el que segueix realment 
el que fa el que creu que és just. Però jo em quedo amb l'Anne. L'Anne és una dona decidida i que sap el que ha de fer i que, i que no defalleix mai. I encara que en algun moment pugui ser cruel, eh, jo crec que la seva empenta m'agrada moltíssim, m'agradaria ser. La vaig escriure en aquest estudi. No us en puc enviar foto perquè aquest estudi no és com era aleshores. L'hem reformat fa, fa un parell d'anys i això ho vaig escriure fa 5 o 6 anys. Però bueno, és aquest espai on vaig escriure. I had written two novels before and I was struggling with my thir- third one when I felt the urge to do something completely different. I really needed to finish something. Uh, it took me some time to write them, maybe a year and a half, mostly because I only did it when I gave myself a break from the novel writing and when I had a really good idea. But in the end, I never finished the novel, but the short stories, they have a very special place in my heart. I think the best anecdotes are the ones that I base the stories on. When I wrote most of the stories, I started with some kind of memory or feeling from my childhood. Then I added components to make it into a story. For example, there is one story about a cat who gives birth during a snowstorm. We had many cats, uh, I grew up on a farm, and I especially remembered one of them. She got pregnant, pregnant at the wrong time and gave birth to her kittens during the winter when it was freezing outside. She had hid them, so we had no idea they even existed. One day, my mom heard a scratching and meowing at the front door, and when she opened, the cat stood there with her kittens. Um, And tragically, and she was urging my mom to let them into the warm house. But tragically, the kittens were already dead. But the cat refused to accept this and kept tr- trying to to uh, make my mother let them in, which she she did. This really moved me very deep as a child, and I wanted to write something about it. But during the writing, the harsh voice of the protagonist's best friend sort of guided me in an other direction, and I added a layer of how the friendship between the protagonist and the, her best friend ends. In my story, the kittens survive, but the friendship dies. It's been five years and a lot have happened in my life since I finished the book. Um, but at the time I did most of my writing in this studio in Malmö in Sweden. I shared it with five other writers and illustrators and it was on the top floor. Uh, I left it when I moved to a house a bit far, too far away. Um, But I found this picture from uh, the time when I was just finishing the book. Uh, My place was just under the window to the left. Mm 